Hi, girls and boys. I'm Pastor Jim, and I'm the pastor of the Ridley Park Presbyterian Church, which is where the Ridley Park Presbyterian Nursery School is. And that's your school. That's where you are right now. And I like to have some time with you to read to you and pray with you and sing with you. It's called chapel time. And every month or so, I'll meet with you. And at chapel time, we do three things. We read and we sing and we pray. So what I'm going to do to start is to read. And what I like to read about is God and how God loves you. You know, God made everything in the whole world. And that means God made you. And God loves you. Jesus is God's son who came into the world to show us how much God loves us. And I want to read you a story from this very special book called The Jesus Storybook Bible. And it tells the stories about from the Bible, which is the word of God to us. God told people what to write. So we know about God because God told us. And in the Bible, we find out about God. But this special Bible is written for children. So I'm going to read from this children's Bible a story about Jesus and children. Jesus' friends were arguing. Who's the most important to Jesus, they wanted to know. Well, James said, I am. No, you're not, said Peter. I am. Nonsense, Matthew said. I'm the smartest. No, you're not. Yes, I am. Yes, no, am too. Are not, am too. Are not, yes, no. Oh, the silly one has, silliness went on like that for a long time. You see, Jesus' friends had started thinking that they had to do something to make themselves special to Jesus. That if they were the cleverest or the nicest or something, Jesus would like them the best. So what did they do? They started arguing. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. Oh, have you ever argued like that? It doesn't stop. and It's not very much fun. And it's not a good thing to do. These disciples, which is what Jesus' friends were called, had forgotten something. Something God had been teaching people from the very beginning. That no matter how smart you are, or how good you are, or how rich you are, or how nice you are, or how important you are, none of it makes any difference. Because God's love is a gift. And as anyone will tell you, the whole thing about a gift is, it's free. All you need to do is reach out your hands and take it. So while Jesus' friends were arguing, see them over here arguing, some friends of Jesus who knew all about getting gifts, and you might say they were the best gift-getting experts, had come to see Jesus. Who were they? They were little children. You know how to get a gift, right? When someone gives you a present, you know how to take it, right? Jesus' helpers tried to send them away. Look at this. They said, children, don't go see Jesus. He ha doesn't have time for you. He's too busy for you. Well, or maybe he's too tired, but they were wrong. Jesus always had time for children. Don't ever send them away, Jesus said. Bring them to me. Now, if you had been there, what do you think? What would you, would you have had to line up quietly to see Jesus? Do you think Jesus would have asked you how good you've been before he'd give you a hug? Would you have to have be on your best behavior and get dressed up and not speak until you're spoken to? Or... Would you have done just like these children did? Run straight up to Jesus and let him pick you up in his arms and swing you and kiss you and hug you and then let you sit on his lap and listen to your stories and your chats. You see, children love Jesus and they knew they didn't need to do anything special for Jesus to love them. All they needed to do was to run into his arms. And so that's just what they did. Well, after all the laughing and games, Jesus turned to his helpers and said, No matter how big you get, never grow up so much that you, that you lose your child's heart. Full of trust in God, be like these children. They're the most important in my kingdom. 
and he's having fun with them. They love him, and he loves them. And Jesus loves you, too. And that's a song we like to sing at chapel time. It goes like this. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Now, that's a nice song, and it reminds us of something very important, that Jesus loves me, and Jesus loves you. And there's another way I like to sing it, and it's a little bit more, hmm, a little bit more fast, a little bit more loud, a little bit more fun. And it's an echo song. So what that means is I say it first, and then you say right after me. So what I'll do is I'll say, Jesus loves me, and then you sing right after Jesus loves me. And I'll say, this I know. And you say, this I know. And I'll say, for the Bible. And you say, for the Bible. And I'll say, tells me so. And you say, tells me so. And then we all sing together. He's the best. J-E-S-U-S. -S, huh. And J-E-S-U-S -S spells Jesus. So let's try it. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. He's the best. J E S U S. Huh. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. He's the best. J E S U S. Huh job. That was fun. That's a fun song. Now, there's another song I want to sing, and it also has spelling in it. It has the spelling B-I-B-L-E, and I see those letters right here. B-I-B-L-E, because this is the B-I-B-L-E, which spells Bible, and the Bible is God's letters to us, God telling us all about who God is and what God has done God made everything that is. He made all the trees and all the streams and all the clouds and all the planets and all the sun and the moon and all the stars. God made everything and God made you. And God loves you extra special much. And the Bible tells us that. And this song goes like this. Oh, the B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. And then at the end of that song, we say what we've spelled. In other words, we spelled B-I-B-L-E, which is Bible. So at the end of the song, we say Bible. So let's do it again. Oh, the B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E, Bible! Good job. We're going to sing those songs at other chapel times, too. At other chapel times, I'll be talking to you about some other things. We'll talk about Jesus being born, and that's what Christmas is all about. We'll talk about how Jesus was able to do amazing things when he was on the earth, like heal people and make storms stop and raise someone from the dead. He could do all these things because he is God. He's God's son. And the most amazing thing, even though he's powerful, even though he can do anything, the main thing he wanted you to know is that he loves you. Let's sing that Jesus Loves Me song one more time. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. He's the best, J-E-S-U-S, -S, huh, little ones to him belong, they are weak. 
but he is strong. He's the best. J-E-S-U-S. -S. Huh. Ah, boys and girls, this has been a good time. Maybe sometime this year, I'll be able to be with you, like, be right in the same room with you. But for now, we'll do this this way, and you can watch me on the video. But you might see me around the church sometimes, too, because I have an office here in the church, and I'm in the church quite a bit. So you may see me, and when you do, you can say, Hi, Pastor Jim. And you know what I'll say? Hi, girls and boys. And it's so nice to have you in our building, and we just love our Ridley Park Presbyterian Nursery School and everyone who's part of it. So in chapel time, as I said before, we do three things. We read, and we sing, and we pray. And we have read, remember from the Jesus Storybook Bible, and we sang a couple songs. Now it's time to pray. And you know what praying is? Praying is talking to God. God, you can't see him, but he's always with you, and he's always listening, and he always wants to hear from you. So when you pray, you're talking to God. And what I want you to do is I'll say some words, and then you say the same words, and don't say them to your neighbor, and don't say them to your teacher. Say them to God, because he is listening to you. And I think sometimes it's a good idea so that we're not distracted when we pray to fold our hands like this and to close our eyes like this. So say these words after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. Help me to love you. Amen. Amen is what you say when you're all done with your prayer. And it means, I'm all done praying now. So, I'm all done praying now. And we sang, and we read, and we prayed. It's probably time for chapel time to be over. But I can't wait for next time when we have chapel time again. Goodbye, girls and boys.